Girlfriend, 24, of one and a half years cheated on me 22, and I don't know how to deal with her not understanding that the relationship is over. Quick backstory on me, my now ex-girlfriend was my third relationship in my life, and I've also been cheated on in both of my previous relationships. This is to say that I've already made a lot of mistakes you can make after being cheated on. The pick-me attempts, taking them back, getting violent towards the affair partner, and other stupid mistakes you make when you get cheated on. I've learned from these experiences. This sub has already helped me a lot. I was love-bombed and gaslit in both of the previous relationships, but I didn't even know what those terms meant at the time. I was blind to red flags and just made stupid decisions overall. After not dating for two years, I met my current ex-girlfriend. She was the exact opposite of me, extroverted, loud, and the life of the party. We first met at a party and she came up to me and asked me if I wanted to dance. I got uncomfortable and confused since she was extremely gorgeous, but at this point my self-esteem was at rock bottom. I just stood there not saying anything for a minute. She then just took my hand and dragged me onto the dance floor. I actually liked to dance, so I didn't fight it and she spent the night just animating me to have fun and interact with people I hadn't met before. It was really fun, and she asked for my number at the end of the night, so I gave it to her. After talking and going out for two weeks, I told her about my past relationships and that I didn't know if I wanted to pursue another one. She was very understanding, but still said that she wanted me to be with her. I agreed, and for the next one and a half years, she showed me what a relationship should actually be like. She respected my feelings, asked me how my day was, actually talked to me if something was wrong, and a lot of other small things that really showed she cared about me. I regained my self-esteem and of course loved her as much as I could every single day. We had arguments, but it was always productive in trying to find a solution, and never us screaming at each other. She made me feel loved and desired. This brings me to my D-Day which was now two weeks ago. I was on a language travel for one and a half months. We talked to each other daily, and I never noticed anything weird about her behavior. I got home three days earlier than planned and wanted to surprise her. I got back to her apartment at 11 p.m. I figured that if she wasn't awake, I'd just lie next to her and surprise her that way, since I was also tired. I went into her apartment with her spare key and walked towards the bedroom. When I looked inside, I saw my girlfriend sleeping next to a guy I had never seen before. I felt all the emotions I had felt before, and knew that the only good decision was to just walk away until I had calmed down. I went to my car and drove to my home. I tried to sleep but couldn't, even though I was tired. For the next two days I didn't let her know what I saw and just replied to her messages like nothing happened. I immediately told my best friend though, let's call him Mr. Krabs since that's what I call him. He really helped me emotionally and got me into the boxing gym where I could let go of most of my anger. Hitting the speed bag is one of the most therapeutic physical experiences I know. I don't know why though, maybe it's the rhythmic banging of the speed bag. I actually cried for the first time in 13 years talking to him. We talked about what I wanted to do now and how I would confront her. After all of this was done, I visited my girlfriend on the day I was supposed to return. When I arrived, she was very cheerful and went in for a hug. But I held my arm out and told her that we needed to talk. I then told her all the things I talked through with Mr. Krabs. I told her that I had actually returned three days early and wanted to surprise her. But when I went into her bedroom I saw somebody else sleeping beside her. The cheerfulness she displayed completely vanished, and she looked like she saw a ghost. She tried starting to talk but I told her that I would first be getting everything I want to say off my chest, since she owed me at least that much. I continued to talk to her about how much she had hurt me, but that I didn't hate her. I told her that I always would have listened to any problem she had and tried to work it out with her, but that her cheating on me was the immediate end of our relationship. I told her all of my thoughts that I had organized with Mr. Krabs. At the end, I basically told her that I wouldn't be in her life anymore, but that I still hoped she'd be happy with the new guy. She already started crying as I was talking, but when I said the last sentence, she started crying harder than any other time I had seen her cry. After she somewhat composed herself, she started saying that the guy didn't mean anything, that it was a one-time thing, she'd never do it again, and all the other things that I've seen written down in this sub before. I told her that she knew exactly how much it would hurt me, and she still did it, so I couldn't take her back. At this point, she started talking about how much of a terrible human being she is, and that she should just die. I didn't want to leave her like that, so I tried calming her down but she kept talking about how she doesn't want to live if I'm not with her, so I called her best friend over and explained the situation before leaving. After this was done, I sat in my car and on the way home started crying again. I suppressed my emotions as much as possible in front of her, but I was in still am a wreck. Now we finally get to the reason I am posting on this sub. 
Since the day I confronted her, she has been spamming my phone with texts and calls to the point where I had to block her. After I blocked her, she drove to my apartment and started ringing the doorbell, begging me to talk to her. I tried ignoring her and the ringing stopped at some point. When I went out a bit later to buy groceries, she was still in front of my house waiting for me. I didn't see her, but as soon as I walked out the door, she threw herself at me, telling me how sorry she was and that we needed to talk. I told her that I had already said everything there is to say. After getting her off of me, I asked her to stop bothering me so I could heal. But she isn't listening. Every time I go out, I weirdly run into her, sometimes alone, sometimes with her friends, but she always mysteriously shows up wherever I go. I keep ignoring her but she still won't stop. How do I deal with this? I still like her and hope she gets better, but she isn't respecting anything I told her about me needing space from her to heal. She would have always listened to a request like this, but she's been acting so weird ever since I confronted her. She even gets her friends to write to me about how I should forgive her and take her back, but anyone that wrote that to me I already have blocked. It just makes me sad seeing her like this and I don't know what to do anymore. I don't want to move since most of my friends are in this city and the apartment I'm renting is perfect for me. I don't want to get a restraining order, but at this point, I might have to. Thank you for reading, any advice would be much appreciated. Now for the top advice. If she always shows up at the places you go to, check your phone for a tracking app. Also check your car for tracking device. Good luck. She is probably tracking my phone. Thank you for the advice. I'll get someone who knows what they are doing to take a look at my phone and I'll check my car. Speaking of your car, a lot of newer cars, like mine, have a phone app from the manufacturer that allows you or another user to check the car's status and location. If you have one of those, change the password. You're one year younger than me, but hundreds of years ahead of everyone my age when it comes to emotional maturity. Well done. My previous experiences showed me a lot of things I did wrong, but this time I'm satisfied with how I handled it. Thank you for the kind words. Previous nicks created scabs that are hard to cut again, that also leave you full of insecurity that allow you to settle. You ignore yellow signs and only react for the red ones. I believe a woman's body is her own, and she can do whatever she likes with it. Odds are, not with me. If she's in the bars or clubs three to four nights a week, she's for the pub. If she doesn't want to make you a priority in her life, don't make her a priority in yours. Seems like your problem is you, you haven't chosen yourself first. Women think that you are lucky to be with them. You will continue this cycle until you learn that you have value, and any woman would be lucky to be with you. Your relationships will change when you realize that you are the star in your life, and everyone else is only allowed in it to add value. The moment they make you uncomfortable or unhappy cut them out. Stop getting women to have a woman. Get a partner who is willing to constantly contribute to your life, not someone whose self-value is such you are lucky to share them. First of all, huge props for how you handled this. I can't imagine any better way how to handle this. What I would do in your case would be to give her one more chance to leave you alone. Write her a letter where you tell her that you see no reason in talking to her, since she has showed you clearly how good she is at lying to you. You also don't believe that the one time she cheats on you is the one time you catch her. What are the chances? And most of all, you have no desire to talk to her because she never made any attempt to come clean, which shows you that she planned to lie to you forever. She had more than enough time to come clean before you met with her. Because of all that, you can't believe a single word that comes out of her mouth, and that makes any conversation unnecessary. If she wants to show you that you meant anything to her, then she can show that the best way by respecting your wish for distance and stay as far away from you as she can. If she won't do that, then you will be forced to go to the police to get a restraining order. Stay strong and stay on your path, you are doing that great champ. And keep on going to the boxing gym, it will be good for you. Last but not least, since she showed you how good she is at lying to you, you better assume that this wasn't her first rodeo. So go to a doctor and get tested for STDs. Better safe than sorry. Thank you for reminding me to get an STD check. I just called my doctor. Also, the letter is a great idea. My mom used to write letters to me to convey her feelings after a disagreement. Thank you for all the encouragement. Now for the last story. Three days after I caught my husband cheating, he attempted to take his life. I cannot believe I am writing this. I am in hospital and I don't want to subject my friends and family to every outraged thought in my mind, so I am choosing this sub to make an outlet. Short of it, I found out three days ago that my husband had been sleeping with multiple men unprotected in our own home over the past few months. I am six months pregnant. I posted about it here. And after talking to him I told him there is no way I can ever get past this and we have to separate. I know it sounds like a no-brainer, but it was so hard for me to say since I have been with him over a decade. This is our first child together. 
I am in my early 40s, and I thought I knew him and loved him. I guess I still do even though I am sickened by what he did. He has been begging me to give it another chance, but I am just refusing. I got a call from the ER at the hospital today as his next of kin, because he had taken an overdose of sleeping pills then called the ambulance. He was taken to hospital and I had to go and show up and see him. When I started experiencing severe abdominal pain and palpitations and ended up being admitted myself, they are confident it is okay and just brought on by stress. My husband's sister came to visit him and then me. He had told her what happened. I hadn't spoken to her. And she was sympathetic at first, but then I blurted out something like I am just so furious at him for doing all of this to me. And she got angry and defensive and said that the cheating was inexcusable and she can understand my pain. But the attempt to take his life shows how much pain he is in over this and his sexuality. And she is shocked I am not more empathetic since I love him for so long. I was just lost for words. What about the pain I am in? I find out my best friend and husband has been doing this. I am pregnant and in hospital and trying to deal with the fact my marriage is over because of his actions. I am not trying to sound self-pitying. I know that it sounds like that, and I didn't mean that his self-ending attempt was him doing something to me. I just meant that everything he has done has put me in such an awful situation, and I just cannot believe she isn't even thinking about my pain. I just can't believe what a mess my life is now. Our lives just look like normal bland suburban, corporate people with no mess, and now this. Sorry for the incoherent rambling, I am just in total shock over everything. Now for the comments, another one with minions who use his identity as a weapon to silence the betrayed spouse. This is not about being gay, it's about his betrayal and his blatant manipulative move to pretend to end himself. Move back to your family, get away from his family of toxic supporters. Discovering that you are bi or gay does not give you a pass to hurt others. Let him recover with their help, let them see him for real when you are no longer around as a buffer to absorb their criticism. They'll quickly realize what you've been through because his selfishness will show itself. Yep, take pills, check. Call 911, check. Get sympathy from sister and make wife a bad guy if she leaves and doesn't support, check. I don't doubt he has self-ending thoughts right now, he's at risk. That said, a cry for help is just that, and he needs to get the help necessary to work through his issues with identity, betrayal, and so on. But, it doesn't have to be OP. Firstly, your primary concern has to be you and your baby and your well-being. You're allowed to be selfish, that's a good thing. Secondly, your ex is not your responsibility any longer. Take your name off as his next of kin, block him and his sister from your life. You owe him nothing. He may have struggled with his identity, but that's not your burden to bear, after he put your mental and physical health at risk. You owe him zero empathy. You are allowed to be angry and hurt. The way your ex deceived you erased all the ten years of love in each and every go he had cheating on you. Your ex clearly has a caring sister in his life. Let her take the burden of empathy for him. You have every right to be completely done with him. Thank you. I needed to hear this. I moved away from my family and friends circle across the other side of the country five years ago for his career. Had he actually told me that he thought he was bi or unsure, I would have absolutely talked to him about it. He even knows I am bi. Instead, he chose to meet random men, have unprotected activities while I was at home and sleeping. I just can't feel sympathy with him right now, and I cannot believe that's what I am being asked to do. Surely, I deserve some for Pete's sake. He has completely unraveled my life. Do you have family or friends you can stay with where you came from? Putting a country between you and him may be what's best for your pregnancy. It's only been three days and I haven't even told my family. I really don't know what to do. My job is here and our home. My closest friends are on the other side of the country and I have told a couple of them. One is flying over to be with me as she can work remotely. I will have to work all of this out, but I am just so overwhelmed right now. Him being with a man doesn't matter. Cheating is cheating. If it was a woman, he would be hated. But because it was with a man, he's getting sympathy. Heck no. And unprotected too. No respect. You are pregnant and need to spend every ounce of energy on your precious baby. Tell yourself you will worry about this other stuff later. That's what I'm telling myself. I'm seven months pregnant and was told about my husband's affair via Instagram by his affair partner. I found out at 15 weeks pregnant. It has been robbing me of my pregnancy, but I keep telling myself I'll deal with all that later. Right now is my time with the baby. Of course it's not easy and 100% possible, but doing the best I can, you can do it too. Good luck. I am so sorry you are in this situation. Thanks so much for your comment.